Okay, join me on page 106 in the Social Studies textbook. We're continuing where we left off. Uh, follow along. Discoveries at Ur. Long ago, the city of Ur lay close to the Euphrates River, but the river has changed its course many times through the years. Today, the land where the city once stood is now 12 miles from the Euphrates and its once fertile fields are part of a desert. Even so, the ruins of Ur offer clues to life in the area from about 5000 BC to 2000 BC. So you can see again, here's the map of where Mesopotamia was um, between the Tigris and Euphrates River, and all of this is kind of considered the Fertile Crescent, this region here. And then you can see it covers what is today Iraq, Iran, Syria, even up into Turkey. Okay, continuing in your social studies book, second paragraph on page 106. Beginning in the 1920s, a British archaeologist named Leonard Woolley led an excavation at Ur. He and his team uncovered many different layers in the ruins. Each layer held artifacts from a different period of Ur's history. In the deepest layer, archaeologists found the remains of a Ubaid village. Above that layer was eight feet of mud, evidence that a flood destroyed Ur soon after it was built. After the flood, the Sumerians rebuilt Ur in the ruins of the rebuilt city. Oh, excuse me, in the ruins of the rebuilt city, Woolley and his team found the Royal Cemetery of Ur, which held tombs from the 2500s BC. The tombs at Ur reveal a highly developed society. Artifacts from the tombs showed the skill of Sumerian craft workers and the existence of long distance trade. Tombs of royalty and high priests contain valuable items made of precious metals and stones. Tombs of other Sumerians often held such items as jewelry and weapons. Discoveries at Ur included a large temple that was dedicated to the Sumerian moon god Nana. The temple's architecture or building style followed that of temple ruins found at the sites of other city-states. Okay, now on to page 107. The rest of the city consisted of small mud brick houses built along narrow alleys. The highest layer of ruins dates from about 2000 BC. At that time, the Euphrates changed course and Ur was abandoned. Okay, turning the page, now we're on lesson three, Mesopotamian achievements. You are there. Times are changing in Mesopotamia in 2500 BC. You've just loaded newly harvested wheat into your wheeled cart. You hitch your oxen to the cart and head for the place where surplus grain is stored. There, workers load your grain into baskets and weigh it, allowing you to learn exactly how much grain your farm has produced. Afterward, you visit the metal workers' neighborhood to trade some grain for new products. They have sturdy plows, smooth cups, and beautiful ornaments, all made of bronze. Everything looks as though it'll last forever. Okay, on to page 109, Agricultural Techniques. The people of Mesopotamia, especially the Sumerians, are remembered for their many innovations or new ways of doing things. For example, early farmers developed new agricultural techniques, such as irrigation, leading to economic surpluses. At first, the Mesopotamians used only simple technology for farming. Early tools, such as sickles and hoes, were made of clay and copper. In time, metal workers started mixing copper with tin to produce bronze, which is much stronger than copper alone. By 2500 BC, many farmers were using bronze tools such as bronze-tipped plows. With stronger plows, farmers could turn soil more easily, which led to larger fields that produced larger crops. 
Next, farmers found a way to plow and plant at the same time by attaching a funnel filled with seeds to the plow. As the plow moved along each row, the seeds were released from the funnel. This agricultural technique allowed fewer farmers to plant more crops. The Sumerians even wrote advice for farmers. In Mesopotamia, archaeologists have found almanacs written on clay tablets. These writings included information that described the best way to plant, to irrigate land, and to care for crops. One ancient Sumerian almanac contained these instructions. When you are about to cultivate your field, take care to open the irrigation works so that their water does not rise too high in it. Okay, let's go up to the top of 109 where you see that picture and let's go ahead and read that fast fact. The Sumerians developed an agricultural technique called shade planting. They planted crops in the shade of tall trees to protect them from the sun and wind. Today, farmers still use shade planting to grow crops. In this photograph, farmers in what is now Baghdad, Iraq, harvest parsley grown using shade planting. And there you see Baghdad, Iraq in the map on your screen. Alright, thanks for watching and I will see you on the next one.